Hi, my name is Joachim Egler, and today I'm going to show you the new Measuring Master app. It can be downloaded on iOS and Android devices. The Measuring Master app works on both smartphones and tablets. The app is compatible with these devices. Measuring Master is free to download. At the top left you can click on the I symbol to find all important license information, write an email to the support team if you have problems with or questions about the app, and gain direct access to the video tutorial you are currently watching. At the top right you can click on the cog icon to make basic settings for projects. Answers to frequently asked questions can be found using the question mark symbol. Right next to that is the Bluetooth symbol. Activate this function and all active tools will be displayed. For example, GLM 50C and 100C or GIS 1000C. Of course, I first have to activate Bluetooth on my tablet and on my measuring tool. The name of the tool is shown, including the last four digits of the serial number, which can be found on the back of the tool. Simply select a tool and the connection will be established. Now we're ready to create a project. I'm now going to give my project a name, while all other details are voluntary. Now I can either enter the contact details manually or import pre-existing contacts from my address book. At the bottom of the display I can now select a trade. As a result, I will then only be shown the functions that are relevant to me. Of course, I can also select additional applications afterwards. The second step is complete, and now all the organizational details are in place to begin a project. The display now shows me what we have and what we can do. I personally prefer to store a project photo first. At the top right I can edit my project data or delete my project. Right underneath this there is a map symbol. I can use this function to open my Maps app which will display and calculate the route to my customer. By tapping on the email address I can write to my contact directly without leaving the app. That's so clever and so helpful. Let's look at the applications under the photo. The export function enables me to decide which content I want to put into PDF format. As soon as measurable data is available, I can use the material calculator to calculate information such as the square meters and the number of windows and doors for my project, for example, so that I can order materials. Now we come to the main functions. They are shown on the left of the display. The customer data that we have already entered is shown at the very top. Under floor plans we have two options, detailed floor plans and quick sketch function. I can use the quick sketch function to draw a quick and easy floor plan with 90 degree angles. The detailed plan on the other hand offers me many more possibilities. There are even more functions to be discovered in the measurements category. I can document walls including doors and windows, perform area calculations, document thermo measurements from my GIS 1000C thermo detector and create pictures by taking a photo and then transferring measurements from my laser measure. The last category is Attachments, where I can create and view notes and to-do lists. In the Floor Plans function I have two options. Create a quick sketch containing basic information, based on which I can do something like drawing up an initial quote for my customer, or create a detailed floor plan. First, I'm going to select the Quick Sketch function. The project data is shown at the top of the display, where I can give it a name. The interface on the display now replaces my paper document. 
All possible applications can be found on the left of the display. Draw mode is already activated. Now I can draw an entire room without taking my finger off the screen. A sketch in a scale of 1 to 50 is drawn very quickly, while reference lines help me and connect automatically to existing lines. Now I can tap directly on walls and measure them. As soon as I make my first measurement, my entire plan will adapt to scale. But I can also activate the selection mode function at the top first in order to edit individual walls. There are four ways to enter the measurement for a wall. By dragging it until the desired length has been reached. By manually entering the length. By measuring with GLM 50C or 100C. Or by sliding up the input field. There I will find the last 50 measured values that have been transferred, including their timestamp. I have these four options for all input fields in the app regardless of which function is selected. I can use the third symbol in the left-hand menu bar to insert breakthroughs, for example, for doors. The breakthrough is set by simply tapping on the position in the wall. Select the top function again and all measurements are displayed. To move the breakthrough, all I have to do is tap on it until it is marked in blue. Now I can move it wherever I want. I can use the fourth symbol to draw dimension lines. This enables me to have lines such as room diagonals displayed based on the current scale. I can of course also dimension this value myself. If I have a relatively large plan, I can zoom in and out of it, or I can also use the navigation function at the bottom left of the screen. At the bottom of the screen you will also find the undo, repeat and delete functions. To delete something, I obviously have to choose an element first before I can tap on the trash can. Now I'll prepare the sketch with notes or to-dos. To do so, simply select one of the functions and place it in the plan. Now simply write the note and add a photo if required. I can also enlarge the image subsequently by tapping on it. That's the perfect reminder of important details. Things get interesting when I decide to make a detailed floor plan out of the sketch. To do so, I tap on the triangle in the top blue bar. If I now choose Convert, a detailed plan is created from my sketch. This is, however, not absolutely necessary. I can also keep my sketches. The warning is just to tell me that this will cause the existing sketch to be lost. Now I can see my sketch, but I have many more options to make it a floor plan. Let's carry on working with the floor plan. First, we'll activate a grid as the background, which is shown symbolically at the bottom of the display. Let's quickly go through the new applications on the left of the display. The arrow symbol is for selecting elements in order to edit them. For example, to add measured values to a wall. If I now select a wall, a window containing possible applications will open. To now change the length of the wall, for example, I first have to select whether I want to dimension the inner or outer wall. Then I can measure with my GLM or enter the value manually. The wall view function is also interesting. Here I again have to select which side I want the wall to be displayed from. To change the height of the wall, simply tap on the value and measure. Tap on the symbol at the bottom of the wall to change the floor height. The ceiling is done in the same way. If I want to position doors, windows or plug sockets in the wall, then I first tap on the symbol with the pencil, select the desired element, tap on the wall and enter the corresponding measurement. Windows and doors can not only be positioned but also adjusted. Enter the measurements for the height and width and select the type. 
Do you see the reference to room height and slopes? Tap on the right-hand or left-hand corner and hold it. Now drag it to set up a slope. The same also applies to recesses. The third application allows me to project something onto the wall. Simply tap on the camera symbol and then on the wall. In my example, I'm going to choose an existing photo. On the right-hand side, I'm given three options for using the image. I can use the crop function to trim the photo, for example, if I have another side wall on the photo. Texture enables me, for example, to select a texture in my image, which is projected completely over the entire wall. But I'm going to select the original option and use the entire image. Confirm with Done, and the photo can now be seen on the wall. That's ideal for achieving before and after effects. And please don't overlook the round arrow symbol at the top center. It is possible to rotate the wall view by 180 degrees. Doors and windows are adopted when doing this. When we've got all the details, we can choose back to go to the floor plan. If I tap on the line, I'm given a total of four drawing options. The simple line is again suitable for making a wall. Let's try that. The color of the wall shows you whether it is aligned horizontally or vertically. The square makes it very easy to display a room with right angles. The third image means point to line. Tapping on the area joins together the points. That's for the creative department. And what good would a floor plan be without some stairs? Place the staircase in the floor plan and adjust it step by step. Now we'll explore the third application. The sub-menu displays four options. If you tap on the first one, it just displays the inner and outer dimensions. The second symbol is for drawing diagonals. The third one shows the square meters of the rooms. And the fourth one shows all the angles. The last symbol is for the previously mentioned notes and to-do lists. Now let's look at the button at the bottom right of the display. The question is, what is meant by import background? To explain this, first I'm going to create a new floor plan. I've already taken a photo of an old building plan. I can now use this image for importing. By moving the little blue point, I can adjust the overlap of the floor plan and the building plan. Adjust the size or view typically with your fingers. Now I can draw my current floor plan over it. Hey, that's really fun. You can basically compare old and new. I can, of course, also directly export everything. Simply tap on the symbol at the top of the screen, select the required data, and you're done. I think this is the perfect time to switch from the floor plan to the next main application, Measurements. Let's start with the wall function. Tap on it and give it a name to keep everything organized. When we look at the overall image, we can see how it matches the wall view in the floor plan program. So you simply use the same procedure. The only difference is that I can now change the length of the wall as well. To do so, simply tap on the value and adjust it. Now for the Area Calculator function. To calculate and order materials, we can enter all the relevant dimensions. First of all, I can choose, voluntarily, a name for the calculation group, for example, Ground Floor. Now I can again optionally give the area a name, for example, bathroom. And now I can start my calculations.
I can again transfer values for the placeholders A and B using my laser measure, or I can also enter them manually. I can also change the amount, for example, to determine the required amount of wall paint. The symbol to the left of the trash can lets me add a new area to the group, while the trash can lets me delete an area calculation. I can use the thermo function to document temperatures, thermal bridges and dew points from the GIS-1000C thermo detector. To do so, I first have to connect the app with the tool. Simply tap on the Bluetooth symbol, activate Bluetooth on the GIS-1000C and select it in the list of available tools. And please never forget to remove both red caps from the tool before measuring. Now I just have to choose an image I want the thermo measurements to be assigned to. Now I can set as many measuring points as I want in the image. Simply select the second symbol in the menu bar and set a temperature marker in the image. When the measuring point flashes, it is ready to receive data. Once measurement has been performed, the data appears in a small window. But I can also measure first and then choose one of the options that the app suggests. In addition to live measurements from the GIS tool, I can also transfer the measured values from the thermo detector's gallery. To do so, simply select an image from the gallery, press the save symbol, and then the measuring data is shown in the app. I can, of course, also save additional info such as notes and to-dos in my image. Now let's look at the picture function. First we'll connect the devices via Bluetooth. Now choose an image and name it. Now I can insert dimensions by drawing lines in the image and measuring directly. The magnifying glass function helps me to position lines precisely in the image. I can also zoom into and out of the image. I can of course also enter values manually. Simply switch to selection mode, select the line, and now enter the value manually or select one from the measured value list. I also have the option of changing the color of the line in order to distinguish it better from the background. I can use the square to transfer areas. But to do so, I first have to switch my laser measure to area measurement. The angle function enables angles and sides to be measured. Switch the laser measure to the inclinometer function to do this. By tapping on the sides I can transfer lengths, while tapping on the tip of the angle enables me to measure it again. All that's left are the attachments. Text memos and images can be added under Notes. Using the folder symbol, I can then assign these to any file in my project, such as my floor plan. Simply select the file, and place it in the image. In the Notes function, I can still find a summary of all the notes from my projects. So I don't have to root through all my plans to find, for example, a certain note. The To-Dos function works in a similar way. There I can create to-do lists and assign files, and also see an overview of my to-do lists. I can also tick off finished tasks, and in the overview I can see whether there is anything left to do. We've reached the end of the tutorial. Have fun using the Measuring Master app and our measuring tools such as GLM50C, GLM100C and of course the GIS1000C.